right, Friday morning, back on a big one. We got a house and garage we're doing. About 2,800 square feet here. We like getting all these poured in one day, just get in and out, instead of having to do one one day, then one another day. Just not enough days in the week to be breaking these up, so. I'm gonna get this all poured today. It's about 35 yards. I'll give that 10 more. Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for tuning in. So we got a pretty big house and garage ahead of us here to pour. First truck shows up half an hour late and it's already about, you know, 85 degrees out in the morning. So we we planned on getting these four trucks all poured out by about 8:30. Um, let's see let's see what time it is I, I tell you what time it is when we get done but let me know what you guys think anyway we were supposed to have mud at 7 it showed up at 730 they're about 30 or 40 minutes away from the plant right here um, so not too far away it's about an average distance for us but the reason we want to get this thing out and get it poured is because it's already in the 80s this morning it's humid we know this is going to set up fast the garage over there you can see it's already in the Sun this morning so you know the key for us is just getting these getting the floors in fast and then focus on finishing them because when finishing time comes when it's time to put the power trial on you know these things are going to just blow up and you're not going to have much time to get a get a finish on them so the, the more time we have in between pouring and finishing the better prepared we can be now what we're doing here is we're pouring uh, the floor even with the top of the wall. This is a frost wall, so that goes down in the ground four feet. And basically, it's just a one-story house. A lot of people are building houses like this nowadays without basements. Just, you know, and a lot of retirement people just want one floor. They don't want to have to go up and down stairs. So we've been doing a lot of these lately. Um, so, and it kind of makes it easy for us just pouring the floor easy with the, uh, matching the top of the wall. The slump, we're pouring probably a seven-ish slump, seven, between a seven and an eight. We got a high range water reducer in the mix and that's because it's it's hot out. We know we want to be able to pour this loose so we can put the high range in the mix, pour a nice loose slump. For the most part, I mean the house floor is flat, it's not gonna bother that at all. So, uh, and it does, you can see right there, we can screed it really easily, it both floats easy and there's no issues really with pulling it around. So we can get the we can get the floor in pretty quick this way. Now I'm using the Viber Screed here from MBW, the Screed Demon, the battery operated one. That's a 12 foot board. Uh, I had a question. I just wanted to give a couple shout outs to a couple guys that are always in the comments. One is Mark Ostrowski. Thanks for always commenting, Mark. I really appreciate it. And the other one is Grumpy Old Concrete Guy. <laughs> Um, you, um, I know I get a bunch of you guys comment, commenting on my videos, but I just wanted to start giving you some shout outs there. So I really appreciate it. Now, one of the questions I got on one of the previous videos was where did I learn how to use the power screed like this? Um, well, I mean, I've been, I've had one of these for, I don't know, probably 30 years ago. I got my first one and we just, we, you know, it, it was starting to be a thing. We were always used to hand screeding, like you, like you guys see us hand screed a little bit, and we like, geez, let's try that. You know, we're not getting any younger. Let's just try it. First one we got, we hated it. Couldn't seem to get the floor flat. Um, didn't really know how to run it. But the more, the 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 more the the more the years went on, the better these things got, and the more we used it, the better we got, and the better puddlers you have behind it, the easier they are to run. So it just takes some practice, really. Uh, I mean, I, when I had my daughter working with me, I just, sh she would puddle behind me and, you know, she got to see me use it enough. So one day I was just like, here, you do it. I'm going to, I'll, I'll rake the concrete behind you. So it, it was just a matter of her, just, she picked it up, she set it down. 
Uh, I told her she had to keep the, the front edge of it tipped up just a little bit, tiny bit as she pulled it back. And just to go nice and even, don't keep stopping and starting. Don't, don't let it sit in one place. And she picked it up really easy the first time. So it's really not that hard to do. And then another question I got on the last video was these screed pads like the one I'm making right now. One guy asked is, do they seem to settle when the slump is loose like this? And the simple answer to that is no. I mean, if there wasn't, this stuff isn't self-leveling. Even though it looks really loose, it's still not self-leveling. It does still hold its shape okay, especially when stuff's flat like this. And when I'm making a one of those grade pads like that, if there's concrete all the way around the grade pad, then there's no real place for it to settle. If there was no concrete around it and, and I did it, then, I mean, maybe it would settle, but we don't have any trouble with that. So we don't usually make those grade pads until there's a bunch of concrete out anyway. Now I'm going around. You can see I've got my bigger mag. We call that kind of a derby. I'm mag it, magging all the edges nice and smooth so we can screed off the edges. And then we use the middle pads to go by with the... We always strike the hand, the middle pads with the hand screed. Uh, we just want to be super crazy fussy with how level and flat they are. So we'll, we'll make sure they're flat with the hand screed. And then we can run the vibrating screed over them and... I don't know, it's just the way, we, you could do it with a vibra screed too, it's just, this is just the way we've always done it, we're comfortable doing it. You can see Darren over there, is over there around those, those plumbing pipes, just doing the small section by hand. And then I'm going to jump on the vibra screed right here in a second and do this section. The trouble we had this morning, when we showed up this morning, and I knew it the night before, the, the builder showed up a couple days ago and he put down the vapor barrier and then you know the radiant tubing guy had to come and do his thing and all that but when they put the vapor barrier down they taped everything so tight and, and you're supposed to but the problem was is it rained in between them doing that and us getting here so when we showed up this morning there was there was water everywhere and we tried getting most of it out you know by raking it into like that styrofoam that little styrofoam box out you see in there behind me, we took that styrofoam out and we was just kind of raking the water into that hole. Trying to get most of it in that hole, but we couldn't get all of it off the plastic. So what we did is, while we're pouring the concrete here, we just tried to keep working the water to one side and then work either working it into a hole like that or working it to an edge where it could run down and get soaked into the dirt underneath. So that was kind of a pain this morning and a little bit of, I mean, you don't get a hundred percent of it. So what happens is it, it does mix in a little bit with the mix and then you end up dealing with all kinds of bleed water afterwards. So you got to wait after you get done pouring and bow floating. Now you got to wait for all that bleed water to dry up off the surface before you can power trowel. It just so happens today. It wasn't real. It wasn't that much of an issue because it's so hot out and the sun was out. It pretty much just evaporated anything that got on the surface. Just waiting for that guy to mix up now, and we're going to get this last little piece of the house done. We don't put, like, there's no wire in here either. The We got fiber mesh in the mix for reinforcement. That's pretty much all we use unless the, the building plan or the specs call for something different. Most of the guys up here, when they spec out, a foundation and a floor nowadays you know they're all usually engineered out these guys have engineers engineered plans and they just spec out the fiber mesh you know with the saw cuts the four inches of concrete 3500 psi mix and that's basically it so if you're wondering why there's no wire why there's no rebar it's just it's just because that's the way the engineer specs it out it's not really our choice I mean, if they wanted it in here, if it was on the plan, we would have showed up the day before and, and put it all in there and had it all ready to go. But we don't, you know, we don't really, when you're pouring inside a foundation like this, there's, the floor is not going to go anywhere. And if the sub base is done correctly, if those guys, when they put the sub base, the dirt in, if they compact it and lifts like they're supposed to, and then they test it for compaction, then it's not going to settle. So... I mean, the only thing the floor can really do is then it, it can crack when it shrinks, which 
which all concrete does it all concrete shrinks but that's why we saw cut the joints and you'll see that right at the end you know we saw cut those contraction joints everywhere so most of the time 90 some odd percent of the time the floor always cracks in those saw joints that we put in we don't really have any trouble with the floors just randomly cracking or settling or you know I guess if it was outside if it was an exterior thing I guess frost could get under it we live in Maine so we get a lot of freezing thorn so you could get some frost under it and it would lift but most on most of the exterior stuff we do we do put wire or rebar in just just for in that case but like a garage like this you know it doesn't really it's it's 3500 psi concrete the concrete's plenty strong enough to hold a vehicle and like I said the sub base is is rock hard so it's not going to settle anywhere it's not going to lift so the only thing that can ha really happen to the concrete is it could shrink while it cracks and I don't know there's a lot of you guys still live and die by the wire and the rebar stuff but we don't we don't have any issues up here the way we do it that's why we do it this way if we did have issues then I'm sure they would spec it out differently By now we're just we're just spent. I mean, it's so hot and humid out right now. The sun beating on you, it's 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 just exhausting. Um, and the four of us. I mean, not that it's it's crazy hard work for the four of us, but just the heat. The heat takes the energy right out of you. Now we're gonna hand screed the garage. The garage slopes from the back towards the front. It slopes three inches. So what we like to do on these is we could use the the vibrating screed but we just like like to be crazy fussy there's no humps or dips in that slope and it's one nice even slope so we'll hand screed it and it's just our way of being a little bit more fussy when we screed but if you're good with that thing if you're good with that vibra screed we we could technically just use that if we wanted to And just hear the sound of that screed on the aggregate <laughs> there's no other sound like that you concrete guys you know what I mean this is how we were taught to screed too is kick screeding like this you know just it's kind of a rhythm thing to to screed and kick as you move backwards and for us you know it's it's about as easy as riding a bike can almost do it with your eyes closed but it was it, it was a little bit of a learning thing I can remember I was probably about 15 or 16 years old when I first learned how to do that and it took a couple days to really get comfortable with it you know doing I was doing big stuff back then it was 4,000 5,000 7,000 square feet so yeah I definitely had much more square footage to learn on but it, it took a couple days to get that rhythm down <laughs> And not be able to, you know, not dig in to the concrete or not ride high on it to be able to to, to screed off a pad like that and make sure it's where it's supposed to be. Now that's a 14 foot long screed there. That's the longest one we got. We used to have a 16 and that a 16 works good too I don't know it's just we find most the most of the floors and stuff that we do 14 is plenty wide enough for what we do and there's times we could use a 16 like like on a 32 foot wide garage or a house a 16 would come in kind of handy but for most part that thing works pretty good see the guy the concrete truck driver he was up there just kind of having a good view up there on his ladder they're gonna get to see us power trial this here in a second I, I did set my camera up on time-lapse and it went right through through from start to finish so that'll be coming right up oh yeah that went pretty good 
35 yards, 20, almost 2,800 square feet. It's 920 right now. Concrete showed up late. It was at least 7.30 before they showed up. They were supposed to show up at 7. So we got it blasted right in. We're all just, we're all literally just soaked from sweating. It's so hot. It's got to be about 90 degrees right now. This won't, this won't take long to finish. Probably be out of here by noon. All power trowel and sawed. So we'll uh, keep you updated on that as soon as we start finishing. I'll be back. All right, so I had to take off and go. I had a meeting, so I got to go meet a guy about another job. This was probably about 30 minutes after we got done pouring. Darren, Luke, and Eric are here. I told the guys, you know, I'd be back as soon as I could. So they got on it. It's roughly 10-ish, 10, 10.15 in the morning. Guy, they got everything all floated now. They're going around buzzing the edges. They got the garage doors cut down. And, I mean, this thing's, this thing's just taken off. Now, Darren and actually all three of these guys are really, really experienced at power trial. And so, I mean, you can see we, we had two. We got two on the house now because the house is going so fast. And then Darren's just going to take care of the garage on his own. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to come back to help him if I can. Because <laughs> it's nice to have one guy just going around doing edges too. But, uh, I mean, they can handle it. You can see the garage starting to black out. We call that shining out. So the garage is shining out house is shining out already you know it's not even noontime yet and what the guys are doing now is they're getting they're taking some of the forms off getting those ready again they're still waiting for me to come back and then they're chalking the lines out for the saw and then they're just going to start sawing luke's in the back sawing the house already we'll get that all sawed up and then get the garage sawed up and that's it and you're going to see me show up right at the very end great timing well thanks for watching guys come on back and we'll see you on the next one